Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Um, this is Ivan Blaskas here. I'd like to make an update video on fasted cardio versus fed cardio. Um, I did the mixed methods approach last year and I will tell you that it absolutely works. Um, and also, there's a lot of different applications to this method. Number one, I like the fact that it's flexible and that you don't have to feel obligated to do fasted cardio every time to, and you don't have to feel pressured into thinking this is the only way to get lean. You can get lean eating before you do your workouts, okay? In fact, it actually, I've mentioned this in previous videos that when you eat before you train, you train harder, you protect muscle a lot better. Um, and there's a lot, there's a whole gambit uh, host of uh, adaptations, positive adaptations that occur. With fasted cardio, you're going to get the metabolic advantage, okay? Now, I find that there's a little bit of pressure with the fed state cardio in that um, you almost feel obligated to push hard every time because if you don't push hard, you know, then what's the advantage, right? Um, that's where I find the fasted cardio comes into play because let's say you want to do your, your hard workouts maybe three days a week, right? Well, on your easier training days, or let's say you work out hard five days, let's say and you have one or two days, instead of taking that day off, you can have it be an active recovery. You can wake up, you could do like a 20 to 30 minute easy walk, right? You can walk around the neighborhood, go to the park on a treadmill, it doesn't matter. But if you go fast it when you do that, you're minimizing the, the cortisol effect because you're not going really hard, but you're maximizing fat loss because you are waking up with lower insulin levels and obviously you're going to be um, running on a reduced endogenous carbohydrate stores. Overnight, you know, your body's you know, going to be using uh, glycogen for obviously involuntary functions like brain activity, your heart beating and breathing and all these things, right? So that said, of course, you're going to have a metabolic advantage with the fasted cardio, but it works great on days where you're not going to push hard. And it also works great on days that you do push hard. Um, I always said the caveat with the fasted cardio was the cortisol and the adrenal fatigue. Well, that said, um, you can obviously mitigate that with my protein approach, which is to have some sort of a plant protein prior to your cardio. So it's more like a carb fasted versus full fasted. Um, that said, that method works. Also like to support the immune system by having some sort of a uh, antioxidant um, product. So I'll have some sort of a green grass powder or something like that, maybe like chlorella or something, along with my green tea and on occasion coffee. Um, so, and coffee has been shown because uh, it's a natural source of caffeine and, and coffee is nothing more than a legume. Um, happens to be the highest uh, caffeine source of legumes out there. But that said, um, you know, my opinion on coffee is, is, is obviously use it prudently and in moderation. Everyone's different, okay? But for the most part, I like to use it um, on occasion because it's very effective at fat loss. It's highly thermogenic. But then again, it could also reduce, uh, it could disrupt your sleep. It depends on who you are. For me, it does. So I like to cycle it. Not to mention, when you cycle it, you you reduce your um, you reduce adaptation to tolerance. In other words, when you become to, when you start to tolerate it and you adapt to it, then it's not going to be as thermogenic or effective. So I like to cycle it. Um, so that's my approach. And some new some new little additions to it would be if you really want to maximize the fat loss cycle, you can certainly do a, a full week or two weeks of the fasted cardio, um, and then bring the fed state back in to get a little bit of a of a boost in your metabolism and so forth and to reduce cortisol and get anabolic again but um, or you can just do it like I did last year which is uh, I would just kind of read my body and read the situation I would do um, fasted cardio anywhere from two to maybe four days a week and then the other um, days I would do fed state uh, training so both methods work um, as far as one being better than the other I think that fasted cardio is takes just a little bit of a nod on that. Again, carb fasted, not 
not fast it like not having anything. I'll have protein to spare endogenous protein and, and sources, which is muscle. Um, and so I find that the carb fasted is ideal, but again, you want to have the fed states. You can ride those adaptations from the fasted, from the carb fasted, and you're going to get fitter with fed state. So that's why I like the mixed methods approach. I think if you just do the, the carb fasted, the caveats are going to hit you. The cortisol overdrive, the adrenal fatigue, and potentially getting uh, too catabolic and starting to lose muscle. Uh, although I've done it before and I didn't lose muscle, so I think the third one's a little more speculative. And I know what the research says, but again, personal experience, I've done carb fasted for an entire uh, cycle or, or prep, and I didn't really lose any muscle. In fact, I almost felt like I, I got even better results. But again, um, I think it's about being sensible, prudent, and I like the variety aspect. And at, at the end, ultimately, it's about focusing on health first. And this is what I've what I've really kind of emphasized is my approach to competing and, and, and so forth. And um, competing doesn't even feel like competing. It feels like a lifestyle at this point. Um, so that's all I want to say about um, fasted versus fed state cardio. I think both are great methods. I think the mix is really ideal. I think it's uh, it's the best of both worlds. It's almost it's almost difficult to debate because I'm, I'm, I'm having balance by incorporating both. Um, so that said, I know there are the folks who are, who are for 100% fed state and 100% fasted. Well, I'm that dude who's doing both, which means it's different, it's unique, and it's plausible, and it's scientifically driven and based. So um, that said, I thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to drop them down below and like this video if you found the information to be useful as well as um, unique. One last thing I want to say about um, carb fasted cardio is I did some juice fasting last year and um, there's been some research that has shown that um, you know fasting in general whether it be um, for eight hours, four hours or an entire day or two days or as long as a week um, it's been shown to be beneficial to the body in terms of metabolic uh, adaptations. And so the main reason is that uh, there's been research to show that caloric restriction uh, or in general fasting has been shown to um, improve um, lifespan and longevity and um, similar to the way resveratrol does, which is a fascinating thing to me, which kind of adds another little addition to why carb fasted can be a beneficial training method. Again, you want to mix it up and have some fed state cardio so you can obviously get the adaptations there too. But another little benefit of the carb fasted is the health benefit of it as well as um, the fact that it's, you know, it, it could be an actual, it's kind of like a, like a modified fast, you know, you, you're going to delay breakfast, you'll have breakfast after. So. That's just another benefit of it, is the actual fasting or caloric restriction element. So I just wanted to share that. Hey guys, I just want to talk about um, what my original intent was with the coffee, is that coffee has been shown to rescue low glycogen status or um, fasted state status. So a lot of times people argue that, oh, you can't go as intense when you go, uh, let's say, carb fasted, right? Uh, as far as training in the in the uh, in the morning, well, there's been studies to show that when you have like basically a cup of coffee or so forth, that it's been shown to rescue some of the performance uh, or intensity level. So that was really fascinating research. Again, the the big caveat is going with uh, adding coffee to an already catabolic state in the morning can obviously raise the issue of excess cortisol elevation. However, since it's carb fasted, having some sort of a plant protein and even getting as far as um, you know, you may want to go as far as throwing down anywhere for an entire scoop of plant protein, like 15 to 20 grams, because that volume can have a potent anabolic effect that could help to buffer the cortisol um, elevating effect of the caffeine in the coffee, in addition to being in a uh, carb fasted state. So there's that option. 
And then there's the other option, which is in a, in a carb fed state or in a fed state, you add coffee to the mix and there's more research down below on that. It's been shown to really augment intensity. So you add a cup of coffee or two to your regular breakfast and then you go work out, intensity could be through the roof. Again, both methods are effective. Um, they, they work on different physiological mechanisms in the body. So the, the fed state's more in the anabolic mechanism, building muscle, having more of a um, having more of an anabolic effect in the body as well as having a beneficial postprandial uh, metabolic effect. So when you exercise after you eat, you're going to augment the thermic effect of the exercise session and you're going to augment the thermic effect of the meal, the breakfast you ate, right? Um, and on the flip side, if you go carb fast it with coffee um, or just carb fast it, you're going to augment, well particularly let's say carb fast it with coffee, you're really going to augment the fat loss benefit you're going to mitigate or minimize the potential cortisol overload and the catabolic um, effects on, on muscle with the addition of the plant protein as well as the antioxidant um, actual ground food, not the antioxidant supplement, but the actual like food itself like barley grass, oat grass, chlorella, um, those kinds of things. So that said, both methods work and they're plausible. And as I just explained, basically the uh, pros and cons to each method. That's why I like to incorporate both of them because they both have pros. And I minimize the cons by some of the things that I mentioned. Okay, such as the plant protein with either a coffee or a, um, or a coffee-free carb-fasted workout. And then with the fed, fed, fed state workout, you can go with the coffee to add to that anabolic uh, and intensity elevating effect or you can just go without the coffee. Um, so it's the variety of it and the variety is going to create moderation anyway. So um, thanks for watching and uh, if you have any questions or comments leave them down below.